spent and worthless now compared to this knowing you Jesus knowing you there is no greater thing you're my all you're the best you're my joy my righteousness and I love you, Lord. Good morning and welcome everybody to our service on this, the 9th of August 2020. Our service today is called The Still Small Voice. And as we start our service, let's pray. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. We're now joined together in a song which has been chosen by Nikki Quick, Strength Will Rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting God. You do not faint, you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. Special riders. Upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Thank you for that, Roger. And now please join with me in the words of the confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Now let's join together in the words of the Venite. O oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the houts of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. And now we come to our readings, and following that we will hear from Max. The reading is taken from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, beginning at verse 3. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was a cake of bread, baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled for forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb and the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death by the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? This is the word of the Lord. The readings from Mark 6, verses 30 to 46. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. 
but he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than a half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten were five thousand. Immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida. I can't say it. Um, enjoy. While he dismissed the crowd, after leaving them, he went up to the mountainside and prayed. Hello, it's good to be with you. Do you know, back in March, when it became clear that we were going to be in lockdown for some time to come, I was actually quite optimistic. I had this idea that I was going to get around to all those areas that I've been wanting to get to for the last couple of years, but just hadn't got to because day-to-day -day life takes over. And on top of that, I had a massive desire to spend more time with God. Just sitting and being in his presence and allowing his Holy Spirit to minister to me. What about you? I wonder how you have been, what ideas you had. Perhaps you even thought to yourself, well, do you know, I'm going to finally get around to doing what Max bangs on about all the time. I'm going to read my Bible in the morning. I'm going to pray. Um, and I'm going to invite God's Spirit to be with me throughout the day. Maybe that was what you thought, or something else. I guess you know what your ideas were at that time. But my question for you, I guess, is how is that going? How did it go for you? For me, you see, there has been some progress. I have managed to get some things done that I wouldn't get done in lockdown. But if I'm honest with you, uh, and I do hope that I am always honest with you, I've also been disappointed. Disappointed with my time I have spent with Jesus. Now, don't read anything into that that's not there. I've, God has certainly been with me during lockdown, and, I, uh, and I've known his spirit. But the truth is, the amount of time that I hoped that I would spend with Jesus has not happened. So what has God taught me in lockdown? Time is not the problem. It's what I do with the time that I have. Time is not the problem. It's what we do with the time that we have. It reminded me of the time when Susie and I first began to have children back in 1994. At the time, there was this myth going around that it wasn't the amount of time you spent with your children, but the quality of time that you spent with your children and for some time I use that to rationalize the impact that my busyness in my life had on our children thankfully some wise people helped me see through that and I learned what all parents eventually learn the hard way is that actually children aren't geared up to suddenly do quality time the quality comes out of the quantity of time as you build relationship with them over time the quality times come out of those moments and the reality is what God has taught me or to be more precise what God has retaught me in lockdown is that is true of his Holy Spirit as well the quantity of time that we spend with God's Holy Spirit allows us to have those quality moments with him you see, time is not the problem. It's what we do with the time that we have. If we take the example from our reading today, we see Jesus enacting that. Jesus is coming off the back of a preaching tour and a teaching tour. He has been seeing many people. He has been teaching his disciples as well, and sending them off to preach the good news. He learnt the sad news that his cousin John the Baptizer has died. He's been debriefing the disciples and there has been even more teaching and preaching. 
Jesus has been busy. And then we see him say this to his core disciples. Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Who's ever planned a quiet time away only to find it being interrupted? Well, that is exactly what happens to Jesus because the people see him and they come to him and he finds he has to teach more. And not only teach, but also feed them this time. But as soon as he can, we read in the Gospels that after leaving them, Jesus went up on a mountainside to pray. If you do a study of the life of Jesus throughout the Gospels, you will often find that he withdrew to pray. I like to call this the Mars Bar way of life. Some of you will remember the Mars Bar and the slogan, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. You see, Jesus literally could have been the busiest person ever to live. His mission here on earth to bring God's kingdom. He could have gone to every single person in the earth to tell them of God's kingdom coming. But we don't see him doing that. Instead, we see him teaching, yes, but we see him taking time to rest and pray. If it's good enough for our Saviour, then surely it's good enough for us. What has God taught me in lockdown? Time's not the problem, it's what we do with the time we have. And if my goal in life is to impress people, then I will always be too busy to spend time with God. How about you? How about the next time that you feel the need to dash out the door, rather than run out the door after saying a quick prayer, you put the kettle on, you pause for a moment and you spend time with God's spirit. You rest in him. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I'm pointing one finger at you, I'm pointing three at me. This is as much for me as it is for you. But imagine if we all desired to spend time with God. If that was our goal in life, rather than to impress people, if our goal in life was simply to spend time with God's Spirit. Can you imagine what that would do to Bedhampton? Yes, we need to see God's kingdom to come. We need to work in that. But in equal measure, we need to rest and play. And of course, pray. Can you imagine what would happen? You see, the slowing down of our minds allows God's Spirit to come. Yes, of course, he can speak to us through our busyness. He can speak to us and break through. But if we look at the apprentices of Jesus that have gone before us, we see that all too often we are able to stop him breaking through, to stop his spirit breaking through, simply through our busyness. I must get on to the next thing. What if we slowed our spirit so much that God's spirit was aligned with us. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? There is something about taking time in the quiet. And I'm relearning this. But there is something about taking that time. You see, God may not speak to us in the first day, the second day, or even in the second week, but we will hear him. If we are disciplined, if we train our minds and our spirits, 
then God will speak to us. God, you see, is not heard in the earthquake. He is not heard in the fire or the busyness of life or too often. He is heard often in the whisper of spending quantity time with him so that the quality can come out. What has God taught me in lockdown? Time is not the problem. It's what I do with the time that I have. As for me, I want to spend more time with God, working, resting and playing. And of course, praying. Thank you, Max. And now as we reflect on that still small voice, let's join together in to be in your presence. share in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now as we come towards our time of prayer, let's join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. As our Father taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now Rosalind would lead us in a time of intercessions. Let us pray. We thank you, dear Father, that you promise that as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Thank you that we can cast our burdens on you, for you care for us and you love to hear your children pray. We thank you for our church, for Max and Susie and all of the others who help in leadership. Help us all to play our part in serving each other and our communities. Help us to stand for you at this difficult time so that all may know that you love them and are there for them. We pray for the vulnerable amongst us and those going through difficult times. Please make them known so that we can help them. Thank you for food banks and the sustenance that they provide. We pray that they would be over with provisions for those in need. Bless all those who use the food bank and may they know your love through it. Thank you for the NHS. We pray that it would have everything that it needs to function efficiently and compassionately. Thank you for all who work for the NHS. Bless them as they go above and beyond the call of duty to be there for people. We pray for those suffering with their mental health. Please provide support for them, dear Father. Sustain our mental health facilities. Deliver those who feel that they are beyond hope. Thank you, dear Father, for your loving care. We thank you for our government. Please help them in the decisions that they have to make. Grant them wisdom and may your voice be heard. May they humble themselves and turn to you and know that you hear their cry. We pray for our medics. May they be honest in their reporting, full of integrity and truth and deliver them from sensationalism. We pray for those affected by the blast in Beirut. Help those trying to clear up the mess. Please keep them safe. We pray for those caring for injured and distressed. Please grant them wisdom and compassion. We pray that the medical people will have everything that they need in their task. Thank you that you are the great provider. Even in the midst of this huge destruction of life and property, May people find you to be close to them, dear Father. We pray for the many thousands of people affected by the COVID virus across the world, those in lockdown and those with little food and medical care, those in very poor situations like refugees. Lord, it just seems so immense. We can only give this to you, dear Lord. Please help and guide governments around the world so that they might know how to do the best for their people. Help those who are making a vaccine. Your kingdom come, your will be done, dear Lord. We pray for those who are suffering persecution for their faith. Lord, have mercy. May authorities stand up and be counted and protect those who are being marginalised, abused and beaten because of their faith. Help them to be strong and to see your hand at work. We thank you for our homes and families. We pray for those we know who are in any form of need at the moment. May they know that you are there for them and that you all can turn to you and find you to be close. Thank you that you say call on me and you will be saved. Dear Father, we lift all our prayers to you, knowing that you hear and answer us. Thank you that you can do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine. Amen. Thank you for those prayers, Rosalind. 
and as we finish our prayers, let's join together in the words of the Collect. Almighty God, who sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of the Church, open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in love and joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as we draw our service to a close, we're going to sing one last song. This is also being chosen by Nicky Quick, All I Once Held Dear. finish our service and go out into our weeks let's join together in the words of the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore amen whatever you're doing this week please keep yourself safe and we look forward to you joining us again next week Oh,
you're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord.